We all like women. Who doesn't like women, bro? A woman makes your heart dance, bro. Me, if I see a woman, I'm gone for a six. Gone for a six. Halas, I know, bro, I know. We love women, but no one wants to be married. Have you noticed? We love the idea of being with a woman. Who doesn't like the idea? We love women, but no one loves to be married. Ah, the commitments of being married. The sacrifices of being married. The challenges and the difficulties of being married is something a real man or a shell doesn't understand. But we don't. We're boys. We love women, but no one wants to be married. That's why zina is widespread. That's why brothers now, they're getting married on the darkies in secret. You know these, you know, these secret marriages. And the brother comes to tell me, brother, it's halal. Please sit down, yeah? Sit down. Stop trying to play with the deen. Stop trying to play with the deen. Brothers are getting married to sisters with no mahram. No one there. No one. No one there to represent her. No one there to, to, to acknowledge. No one there. Nothing. Nothing but a phone call, text messages. Brothers with beads, they're marrying women in secrets. Why? Little boys, he thinks he's a rajal. You're a little kid. You're a little boy with hormones. That's all you are. You're not any different to me. You're not any different to every man here who has desires and has shawa. But the difference is being a man or being a male, being a boy. Anyone can get married, my brothers. Anyone can sleep with someone. But a real man, a real rajal, my young brothers, he gets married and understands that in marriage, it's not all rainbows and lollipops. It's difficulties. Yeah, there's good times, no doubt. But there's hardship. And that's why it's half your deen. It's half your faith. Ah, little boys. We love women, but we don't like to be married. We love kids. Have you noticed? I love kids. We love kids, but no one wants to be a father. What do you mean be a father? What do you mean be a father? You know why? Because in the Sikh society, yeah, the same society that says this is Rajel, the same society that says this is the man, the same society that says, brother, this is the man, that's the same society that doesn't praise fatherhood. We love kids, everyone loves kids, but no one likes to be a father, man. That's why most of our so-called men, you know, the little boys that are stuck in big bodies, he's married, married with kids, and wallah, qasam by Allah, three, four, sometimes five days a week, he's hanging out with his mates in cafes until nine, ten o'clock at night, bro. While his wife and his kids are at home waiting. Is it haram? I'm not saying it's haram. Remember what I said in the beginning. Halal and haram, this is kindergarten language. But your wife is at home waiting, your kids are at home, and where, where is he? Two, three, four, five days a week. He's hanging out in cafes. Grown men, wallahi, I see brothers with beards hanging out at cafes on the corner, sitting outside looking at women as they go and come. But because he has a taru and there's two, three of them, uh, that he's a man. We love kids, but no one wants to be a father. Don't you ever think, my brother, that you having a child makes you a father. Don't you think that having a child makes you a man? Wallahi, forgive me with all respect and all honor and all ranks. You know, the dog, the kalb, the kalb, the dog, the animal. The dog sometimes has eight pups, eight puppies in one lira. Does that make him a man? Does that make him a man? No, it doesn't make him a man. Your ability to have children doesn't make you a man. Your ability to raise those children, your ability to father those children, that's what makes you a man, bro. We love money, but no one wants to. No one wants to work, bro. <laughs> we love money. Please, my young brothers, please. Tonight's talk is very important for you and I, man. We love money, but no one wants to. No one wants to work, bro. That's why drug dealing and being a runner is so appealing to the young boy. Why? Because he's 16 years old. He's going to earn 200, maybe $250 a day as a runner. Yeah, and he starts off on $250 a day. Straight away, he's earning more money than his father is. So he's 16, his father's 40 something, and he's earning more money. So now it doesn't matter that it's haram income. Doesn't matter that this is ghadab money. Doesn't matter that this is going to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all he sees 
is what in front of him is money and the very society in which he lives in is driven by money and wherever he goes it's all designer labels and designer names and brand names so this poor kid he's thinking he's doing the maths he's thinking brother why should uh, so we all love money but no one wants to work today the brother he's 20 25 i know brothers that are 30 he's telling me brother i want to retire by the time i'm 35 retired and i'm kicking back and i wish wallah i wish he wants to retire at 35 so he can dedicate his life for deen no 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 he wants to retire so he can indulge in dunya to the day he dies bro because work is taking him away from his love his real love dunya cafes and restaurants uh, fishing trips fishing trips holidays vacations weekends see a real man understands Abu Bakr when he was the Amir, when he was the Khalifa, he went outside and went to the market to earn his dollar. Even in old age, the Prophet وسلم, died with debt. So, 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 so what's happening here? We all love Allah. Have you noticed? Wallahi, go to the junkie. Go to a prostitute. Go to a brother who's a murderer. Tell him, brother, do you love Allah? Everyone loves Allah, but no one wants deen. No one wants deen. Brother, how can you love Allah, but not have deen? No, no, no. So now there's this sick culture. Have you noticed this culture? Brother, you don't know what's in my heart. My iman is in my heart, brother. My relationship with Allah is in my heart. So now this idea of the heart, it's very poisonous. Why? Because he comes through. Brother, do you know what's in the hearts? No, I don't know what's in the hearts. But really he's hiding his, he's hiding his hypocrisy with this. So yes, everyone loves Allah, but no one wants deen. Everyone loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother, please, brother, please, when you say his name, brother. Everyone claims they love the Prophet. But no one wants his sunnah. What do you mean? What do you mean his sunnah? Eat on the floor. Eat with your fingers. Grow a beard. Live simple lives. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? We love Rasulullah. Wallah, we sing his songs and we'll parade and we'll have big protests when something happens. Ah, we show. But no one wants his sunnah. We love Jannah. We love Jannah. But no one wants to die. Have you heard when someone gets cancer? <gasps> <gasps> Did you think you're gonna live forever? <laughs> What's, what, 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 what do you? We love Jannah, but no one wants to. Ah, no one wants to die. Tell me, my brothers, is this the quality of a man? This is not the quality of a rajal, bro. It's not the quality of a man. A man is realistic. A man is realistic. A man is honorable. You know what this ummah is suffering from, my brothers? Trust me, it's not knowledge. The alam is ocean, books, books, apps. Wallahi, jump on YouTube, hours and hours and hours of talks and bayans and khutbas and classes and knowledge is there, it's abundant. What is this ummah suffering from more than anything? The biggest disease, the biggest sickness of the Muslims, the biggest calamity in the ummah, do you know what it really is? There's no men. And you know who suffers the most when there's no men? You know who suffers the most? Women and children. When there's no rijal, who suffers? You know, in English they say, in English they say, when the cat's away, guess who come to play? Who? Ah, uh, when the cat's away, there's no cat. When there's no rajal, when there's no men, when the cat's away, who comes to play? Ah, uh, the rats and the mice. No men, rats and mice. Look at our societies. When there's no rijal, wallah, when there's no men. You know, an imam once, an imam, true story, I heard this with my own ears. An imam once who was narrating his story, 
Please, wallahi, I will wrap it up. But just stay with me. These are the last very important moments. Imam said once he was preparing for Friday khutbah. He said, so I'm sitting in my office and I'm trying to prepare my khutbah. He said that my son, he was four or five years old. You know, he's driving me crazy, man. Every time I put pen to paper, he jumps on me and he wants to play. He's a little boy. So the sheikh is thinking, he's thinking, you know, look, your Allah, this kid's driving me crazy. Uh, remember, but to be a man is to be a father also. So for us, we would do our, give him an iPad, get him off your back. Yeah, this is the father now. This is the 21st century father. Yeah, give him an iPad, get him off your back. So the sheikh is saying, man, look, I need this kid off my back. I need to prepare my khutbah. How do I engage the kid? Give him something constructive. So the sheikh was saying, the imam says, he says, I had a magazine. I'm freaking through the magazine and I found a picture of the, of the world, a globe. It was a picture of the globe. So the Sheikh said, look, let me rip this page out and I'll cut it into a little puzzle. Yani I'll cut the countries into pieces and I'll give it to the boy and I'll tell him to put it together. He's thinking this will keep, yani this will keep him busy at least for an hour. Get him off my back. He said, I cut the picture. I gave it to my son. I said to my son, listen, put the world, put the world together. So the Imam said, the boy took it. I'm thinking, huh, finally now I can gather my thoughts and put the khutbah together. He said within a few minutes, a few minutes, the boy was back and the world was put together. So the sheikh's thinking, is my son a genius? He's a little boy. So the sheikh says, he says, my son, Allahu Akbar, tabarak Allah, how did you know where Europe is and the Americas and the Africas? And yeah, yeah, the kid doesn't go to school, how did you know? He said to him, Wallah, father, I don't know. He said, so how did you put the world together? He said, Dad, on the other side of the picture, there's a picture of a man. So I put the arms together and the legs together and the head together. So the Imam said, what? He said, SubhanAllah, you gave me my topic. When man comes together, the world comes together. But Qasim by Allah, as long as man is destroyed, this world will always be destroyed. 